Okay, really quick demo just to show Broncom users how they can extract previous years worth of attendance marks data, because this seems to be a bit of a sticking point at the moment with Broncom. I'm sure they'll improve it in the in, in the future, but at the moment it's quite tricky. As far as I'm aware, there are two ways of doing it, um, and I'm going to show you them both here. Uh, the first way of doing it is to use the current year's uh, attendance marks before the year clocks on and we move into the new academic year. So I'm recording this in August uh, and most of the data uh, that schools have attendance wise has already been recorded for the current year to date. The problem is going to be on the 1st of September or maybe the week before when Bromcom rolls forward the new academic year kicks in and it's going to zero those year to date tables down. So how can we capture that data before it gets zeroed down? And this is one, one, one solution to that problem. I'm going to show you this, 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 this solution, which is to use the data set uh, online to capture all those marks, all those individual lines from the CSV uh, files that make up the attendance marks. Um, so what I've done here, I've gone into um, my uh, online copy of Power BI, where I've previously uploaded uh, one of my um, data sets. And I'm going to go to the data set view, so not the normal view, which is the, the, the visualizations, but the data set view, which is this one. I'm going to click on that one. Um, and what we've got here is everything we can do with the data set. So this isn't the actual front facing report this is the data set behind it and you'll see on this page here we've got a list of all the tables that are in that data set here's the attendance marks now this is Bromcom this is your year to date attendance marks table you might have called it something different of course I don't know what you've called yours but if you've got one there it could be listed in the tables here and it's a simple matter of choosing that attendance table gives you a little summary of what's in the attendance table so there's all the marks the mark dates all the rest of it and I can choose export and of course I'm going to choose comma separated values I wouldn't choose Excel because there's a, a notional 1 million row limit with Excel and this might be more than a million rows possibly so I'm going to go for comma separated values choose comma separated values and away it goes it can take a while to do uh, but leave it to it it gets there in the end it creates a CSV file you can then import that CSV file into your data model and append it onto your attendance file or attendance table rather I uh, can't go into how you do that this this video, but that gives you a, a rough idea for the technique. Okay, well, what if you don't have the luxury of uh, being at that time of the year when you've got a nearly full or completely full attendance year-to-date table to export? What if this is midway through the year and you want to look at maybe the previous academic years worth of data, or even, maybe even academic marks data before that? Well, there is a way, I think, with Broncom's uh, report writer. Now, I'm just going to nip over to Broncom here. I've got a little demo system. I'm not a Broncom expert, but this seems to work with some schools. So I just thought I'd pass it on to you here. Uh, we're going to use, uh, we're going to go to modules uh, and then analysis and then analysis exports. So that's modules, analysis, analysis, export. And then we can choose uh, an actual report. And if we use the export drop down here, we should find one that says student attendance data. So that's student attendance data. Uh, we can give it a better name. Maybe we'll say 2122. And we'll tick the box there that says use export name. And then you can find a group uh, that we want to export. And in this case, we want everybody. Um, there may well be a better way of doing this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose your groups from the group type here and click on find. And then I'm just going to select all the year groups that I want to see. Uh, I'm holding down the control key as I do this. I'm sure Broncom users will tell me I'm doing this all wrong. Uh, but there we go. I'll choose 7 to 11 and I'll click done. So now those are the year groups that I've selected. And then I need to cha change the start date. This affects when the marks um, uh, are displayed for. So I just want to change this so that it's the previous academic year, maybe starting on the 1st of September, right there, and going all the way up to the last day of August. 
No. I think I've just deselected my student groups there, so let me just re reselect them. And then I can export that. And when it's finished, we get the file down there, which we can then click on. And it will download that file uh, to my uh, downloads file, download subdirectory. Okay, here's a really simple Broncom style report here where I've just brought in the students table and I've brought in the student attendances table. This is the year to date one. This is the year to date one that we want to add the previous year's attendances to. Uh, so we can get the data from that CSV file. So if I just click on new source, it's um, a text or a CSV file in this instance. You might consider uh, importing it from SharePoint folder um, if you've got several of these CSV files, but I'm just keeping this example really simple. So I'm just bringing it from a text or a CSV file. Uh, we can then navigate to wherever I've downloaded that to. I've just left mine in the downloads folder. So there's student attendances last year, quite a big file. Open it up. And this will bring the file into the data model and then we can join it to the main attendance table. Here's the usual screen. Let's click on OK. Now as a default, this has a lot of extra information in. Uh, it's got four name surname. We'll take those out in the middle. But the key bit of extra information that we definitely don't need is all the class attendances as well, the lesson attendances. So I'm going to filter those out by using the period column here, where I can filter on AM and PM. So I just want the AM and PM session attendances. Uh, and then I don't need a lot of these other bits of information. I'll need the admission number. I'll come back to that in a minute. But I don't need four name. So I'm getting rid of that. This is a control and click. Uh, I don't need year group there. Selecting all the things I don't need at this stage. I don't need class. I don't need teacher. I'm going to remove those columns. Take those out. So this is much closer to what I need. Um, so this is much more similar to the basic student attendances uh, file. If I have a look at what's in student attendances, it looks like this. Um, and again, it's a little bit over the top in terms of, of, of what I what I need or, or, or don't need here. Um, but the key thing, I suppose, here um, is that this is referenced by student ID and this report gives us admission number and they are not the same thing, uh, unfortunately. Um, it's a shame that that report doesn't give us the student ID. It gives us admission number instead. So how do we convert from admission number to student number? Uh, student ID rather. Well, we can use the merge queries function here to basically do a lookup on the student file um, and match by admission number and return as an extra column the student ID. So let's just do that now. We can do a merge queries like this. Um, we're going to merge the queries. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, we'll do it there. Merge queries on the student attendance data last year. Comes up with this box here and says, okay, well, what do you want to merge it with? Well, we want to merge it with students. How do we want to match them up? Well, we want to use admission number here and admission number there to match. Now, if it comes up with privacy levels, just click on ignore. And uh, it'll do a little uh, rough calculation as to how many it's matched. Uh, it usually matches, I think, all of them. Uh, and that one has matched all of them again, so that's a good sign. And we'll click on OK. So it'll do that match now and here it sort of starts to unpack the data within the students table. Remember I only want one single column. That's the uh, student ID. So I'll click on this unpack button here, which is this one here. And there's all the columns that are in the students table. Remember, I don't want them all. I just want one and that's the student ID. So I just highlighted student ID there. Um, you can tick or untick this, uh, this button at the bottom. I'll untick it. Um, and I'll click on OK. So there we go. Now we have a student ID column in here. So it's matched our admission ID to a student ID. Uh, now I don't need admission number. So I'm going to get rid of admission number. There we go. 
So this column now has got the, effectively the same columns here as here. And I want to merge this into that one. And I can use the append queries function, which will look to match column headings. And if it finds a matching column heading, it'll merge, uh, stack one column on top of the other column effectively. But if there's a single spelling mistake, if there's a missing space, or if I've, I've done it uppercase rather than lowercase, it won't see a matching column and it'll create an extra column, which is not what I want. So I need to make sure that the column headings match up perfectly. Now I've left students attendances here as it is. Um, and I think that's a little bit messy. So I'm going to tidy this uh, up just a little bit more. So I would take um, attendance ID out there. We don't need attendance ID. Um, we don't need collection name there. I'm going to remove to collection name. Uh, the start date is the actual mark date. So that needs to be just be called mark date. And it just needs to be a date, I think, as well. I'll notice records the time as well on here, but I don't think that's particularly useful uh, unless you're monitoring exactly when registers are taken. So before I uh, change the name of that, I'm just going to change it into a time only column. So I'm going to go to the transform menu here, uh, highlight the start date column and where it says date there, I can call it date only. And that strips out the time element from there. I'm just going to call it mark date. Uh, calendar name is really session. Don't need the end date. I don't need the instant. So I'll take those out. I don't need, well, I'll keep late minutes in there. I don't need comment. Take that out. So I've got that now more or less as thin as I can. I always like these tables to be, there's a lot of rows in these tables, so they need as few columns as possible to be effective. So I've now got student ID, session, mark date, and the mark itself in this one. And here I've got student ID. Um, that's called period. Sorry, that needs to say session. It needs to match. Date is mark date. Remember, it's case sensitive. So if I get the case of any of these wrong, it will see a different column. But now, so long as the column headings in here match up with the equivalent column headings in here, we should be able to go to our student attendances table and append the queries, choosing append queries there. So we can then choose to append student attend attendance data for last year to here. And now we have got um, a bigger table that includes all the contents of this table as well. At this stage, I don't need this separate table to load into the main report. So if I want it to be refreshed, I don't want it to be loaded into the main report. So I'll just make sure that enable load is unticked. And that is how you can bring previous uh, uh, years worth of attendance marks data into Broncom. Uh, it's a bit of a faff. Hopefully they'll uh, uh, make it somewhat simpler in future. Thank you.